We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. We cannot be both the world's leading champion of peace and the world's leading supplier of the weapons of war. So said 39th President of the United States, Jimmy Carter. And it's a saying that bears particular relevance as America finds itself on the brink of a new nuclear arms race. Welcome back to Liberty Nation Radio here on the Radio America Network. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. On today's show, we talk Jimmy Carter, the Biden and Putin standoff, and all things liberty related. I want to take a moment just to say a special thank you to our listeners out in Dalton, Georgia on WBAC 1340 AM. Thank you for being here. And remember, this show is proudly sponsored by LibertyNation.com, where you can access podcasts, breaking news, analysis, and a range of biting and brilliant shows to whet your appetite for freedom and your fondness for the great American Constitution. As the 39th President of the United States, Jimmy Carter opts to receive hospice care rather than further medical treatment. At the time of recording, the former President is still with us and receiving outpourings of appreciation from Americans and world leaders alike. Now, we're very fortunate today to be joined by Liberty Nation's senior political analyst and longtime host of this here radio show, Tim Donner, who has some unique insight into the man himself and his legacy. Thanks for joining us today, Tim. Good to be here, as always, Mark. So, so, Tim, uh, at 98 years old, at time of recording, Jimmy Carter has been a, a notable political figure from his early days as a Georgia state senator to his later years as a, an elder statesman, particularly with uh, his, let's call it, charitable work. Um, what's your insight into the man and the president? Well, I think the way to summarize Jimmy Carter in the totality of his life was from political failure to personal triumph, because he was, by every account, a painfully failed president. His, I know you and I like numbers, uh, Mark, his approval dropped to the low 20s Mm. during his presidency. And he lost 44 states to Ronald Reagan. It was a Yeah, it was a full landslide and a disgrace for him. But little did we know that he would treat the rest of his life almost as if he became president just so he could become a former president and use the capital that he had, the personal capital, because he was always personally liked, to do incredible works of charity most notably for Habitat for Humanity, which is a charitable organization that builds houses for the poor that he put on the map simply by showing up and putting his shoulder to the wheel and doing manual labor to build houses. That sent a tremendous message. But as far as a president goes, I would liken his legacy somewhat to Donald Trump in the sense that he was elected in a year, in the, perhaps the only year that he ever could have been elected because he was unheard of. We were just coming off of Watergate and the issue of corruption in Washington was ripe. It was a number one issue. Republicans had been trounced in the 1974 midterms after Ronald Reagan had resigned, um, excuse me, Richard Nixon had resigned. But let's say that the country was ripe for someone with a, the kind of simple, decent Christian morality that Carter brought to the job. Unfortunately, that sort of innocence turned to naivete, which turned to ineffectiveness. So this was his moment in time, and he capitalized. And just the story of him rising from an obscure Southern governor to vanquish, just like Trump, vanquished Mm -hmm. a series of impressive candidates like Mo Udall and Scoop Jackson and Jerry Brown to win the primary and he came out of it with a 20-point lead and barely hung on to beat gerald ford but his problems began very soon after he came to washington well you know that that really does ring true because there is the the pervasive opinion of uh, president carter that he had a a terrible time in office followed by an admirable post-presidency period 
um, I guess, some of those issues that he had in office, which you correctly point out are due in large part to political naivety. Um, you've got the Iran hostage crisis that really uh, threw him for a loop towards the end there. You have the, the gas prices, you have the, the runaway inflation. It also, I believe that was also the period that uh, Paul Volcker got brought in uh, to the Fed, right? It was, and that sort of contributed to the uh, fairly rapid descent of the Carter administration. It's like so often happens, again, using the Trump analogy, that uh, what seemed refreshing and new and exciting about Trump in 2016, for many people, the, uh, the thrill was gone by 2020 because what was once new and fresh and exciting uh, had become quite the opposite. And that's what happened uh, with Jimmy Carter once they saw uh, what a presidency of this man was going to be like. It didn't, it, it never panned out. And I mean, only Herbert Hoover uh, was defeated more soundly in his bid for re-election. Hey, Tim, I, I believe you've got a personal story about Jimmy Carter. I do, and it's a hysterical one, because one of the things that distinguished Ronald Reagan and some others, including Obama, uh, Barack Obama, is as presidents, they had pretty well-developed senses of humor. They knew when they could be light and they would get the assembled mass of either media or people to laugh at their at their humor. Jimmy Carter was not a guy who was humorous really at all. And yet the one encounter that I had with him during the 1976 campaign, which I was pretty heavily involved in, I was very active on the campus at Syracuse University in that campaign, but I had gone to Eugene, Oregon, for the uh, wedding of my sister. We get to the hotel in Eugene. It's a Saturday afternoon, and we are dressed to the nines. We're dressed in formal wear. And I had forgotten that that was the same weekend before, as bef right before the Oregon primary. So Jimmy Carter was in town. And as we came down to the lobby, we stopped and stood there because here was Jimmy Carter coming the other way. I said, guys, this is Jimmy Carter. He stops. He looks at us in our Sunday best, in our formal wear, and says, famously, this has become a family legend. My, this is the most formal town I've ever seen. <laughs> and that, <laughs> Because uh, it was a Saturday afternoon in Oregon, and here's yep. these people in formal wear in a hotel lobby. And so we all laughed, shook his hand, and of course, he flashed his famous Carter grin at us mm. and then moved on. And won that primary, by the way, and went on to win the nomination in the election. Here we are. We're talking uh, the life and times of former President Jimmy Carter. Later in the show, we're going to discuss the nuclear arms race. But we'll be back with Tim after this short break discussing Jimmy Carter's presidential performance. Don't go anywhere. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Entertaining, informative, and just plain fun. Watch Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five. Produced by conservatives for conservatives. C5 is a left free zone. Hosted by Liberty Nation's Hi, Lisa, Lisa K. K. Donner. Joined by a raucous, irreverent panel Mag of authors. Of deconstructing the leftist narratives. Down debating the hot, hot topics. topics and remembering to laugh. <laughs> Join the official conservative safe space. You only did that to piss Jeff Liberty off. Nation's The Conservative Five. 